Yeah, what's going on everybody? It's Apple King Carter here, the Superman of YouTube. I'm checking in from that NBA 2K11. Second quarter of the GOAT versus the Black Mamba. MJ versus Kobe. 23 versus 24. <laughs> Basically, um, today I wanted to actually talk about a big topic instead of talk too much about the gameplay. Because uh, I know last video, you know, it was pretty good. You know, it, it was great actually, but... I just I just want to talk about something that a lot of people want to hear me talk about that I just been trying to put out of my mind because I know NBA 2K12 is going to be the best game out this year. I'm just saying. But basically I'm here to talk about the NBA lockout, man. The NBA lockout is is pissing me off. It's uh actually scaring me. Um it's going to make my NBA 2K12 experience horrible if we don't have an NBA season this season. You guys just don't understand how miserable I will be if I can't see my Sixers play one NBA game this season. Now, um, I want to tell you guys something about the NBA lockout. I want to give you a couple facts. I want to give you a couple things they're talking about, a couple of deals that's on the table, um, and the reason why they're not coming to agreements. Um, I also want to talk to you about the foreign exchange. And when I say foreign exchange, I mean foreign teams that are taking contracts on the NBA players now basically a lockout is something like a strike um, when when a company and a union don't come to an agreement of course the employees tend to say hey I don't want to work you want to know why I don't want to work because I'm not getting the benefits I want I'm not getting paid and basically the deals that's on the table just aren't working now we had an NBA lockout once before um, the 1998-1999 season um, it, it was very disturbing. Yes, I was I was young, but I knew what the lockout was all about. Um, it was only 50 games played that entire season, and when I when I mean I was miserable as a young kid, you know, looking at the Philadelphia 76ers, looking at Allen Iverson, not even really playing that much. Yeah, I know who AI was back then, <laughs> but it was it was very you know what I'm saying disturbing and. I just don't want that to happen this season because I know it's a lot of NBA fans out there this season, man. Like, okay, you know, the big trio, Miami, they they came about last season. Also, uh, you have the Mavericks that won the NBA championship. You have the powerhouse West teams, and you also have the great Eastern Conference teams. Now, all these guys are good. Don't get me wrong. You know, um, everybody needs to get paid somehow you know if you're in the nba you should be getting paid you know if it's if it's the minimum you know for your for your skill set or if it's the maximum of a flex cap now with the whole salary cap problem that's going on basically the owners and the players can't come to an agreement because they have a hard cap set on the table of about 62 to 64 million dollars i believe and the players basically if you're a great player on the team take take Miami for instance you have three players that would be getting paid very high contracts and the rest of the team would be almost at the league minimum like you know how much of a pay cut that is just imagine you would you would have to start rearranging what type of star players are on star teams that mean that that means that the Nets will have almost a powerhouse team next season if that salary cap goes in effect because a team won't be able to keep three superstars on one team basically because the money won't be available now there are two people that are the heads of the two titans that are clashing you have the mbpa executive uh whatever his name is bill hunter or something like that he's like the executive for the nba pa and you also have the players association president which is Derek fisher for the la lakers now Derek fisher is for the union and of course bill hunter is for the owners you might as well say if you if you want to make it that simple um and what's happening is when they're putting all these deals on the table and they're not saying hey we we need a, a strong cap and we got our, we can't pay you guys benefits and all of that stuff all that's doing is making the players say hey well guess what we don't want to play we don't want to make you money now um as kevin love said kevin love said we are the players we are the money makers we go out there and play for the fans so we deserve to get paid for our talents now i feel him 100 percent but at the same time 
a compromise has to be made some some way somehow a compromise has to be made you you guys just can't say hey well we're not gonna play like you know what i i, I feel listen i feel y'all i'm gonna let y'all finish but seriously a compromise has to happen david stern is the commissioner and he's just like well he doesn't know what's gonna happen seriously uh he's he's very scared because of the the preseason um is still not scheduled really it, well, the schedule is up, but of course, these guys aren't really playing. Uh, the summer league was canceled. The entire summer league was canceled. You just say, you know what? We're going to get that out of here. We're not going to do that. So, basically, you got all these players that were ju just drafted to the NBA that came into the worst situation. Now, Chris Paul said it himself. He said that he knew for a fact that this wasn't, this wasn't like something that happened in the last few weeks. He saw this over the last few years. He's, he told his teammates, he told even the young guys on the team and told them, hey, change is coming. You guys, you guys have to, you know what I'm saying, be on top of it. You guys have to, you know, start ensuring your futures, you know. Now, it's, it's, just, it's just so bad to see this type of thing happen, you know, when it's a lot of fans out there. And also, it's not even, it's not even about the fans, man. It's about the people that actually work for the NBA, you know, just just imagine, you know, all right, David Stern said it himself that he's already writing up furlough packages for people that work for the NBA, like furlough packages already, man. Like this is this is just going to take a significant hit to the whole NBA community, man. Like, seriously, I don't I don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm 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 just I'm just baffled. Seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously baffled. I know someone that actually works at a. Uh, at the Wachovia Center that's now named with the Wells Fargo Center and he's like man what they're going through over there right now is crazy he said all he can do is just pray that you know the NBA season starts because he don't he doesn't know what he's gonna do if you know he can't have his job at the center anymore now of course the NFL lockout is over so he said that he's already put in an application to work at the link so he's he's working on that right now and um shout out to the NFL for you know stopping the lockout um even though you know I'm not much of an NFL person you know I love my Eagles but I wasn't really too tied up in the NFL lockout like that wasn't heartbreaking to me but the NBA lockout is man seriously it's it's, it's really disturbing now another thing that I want to talk about are these foreign teams okay now uh we have the CBA um if you don't know what the CBA is it's the Chinese Basketball Association they have restricted contracted NBA players from playing in their league, basically. Um, if the NBA season is canceled, that means that not one person that is currently under contract in the NBA can go over to the CBA and play basketball. Now, the reason for this is being if Carmelo Anthony and Chris Paul decide, you know what? it's not just it's not going to happen this season and they want to go play for china just imagine you know if they if they of course are still in deal talkings and still putting things on the table to try to get the nba season rolling just imagine what chris paul and carmelo anthony would do oh i got i got a bad injury or oh man i'm having trouble at home with the family and i need to get back to the states that's what the CBA does not want. They don't want people coming over, playing a few games, and just leaving without without even a notice. You know, because of course they can do that. You know, if they if they want, they can just say, "Hey, I got I gotta go." Now the Chinese season starts November twentieth. Now we don't know what's gonna happen, but I can tell you that the CBA will welcome free agent NBA players. That means anybody whose contract is up. And that are just sitting up on a free agency board, just waiting to get plucked. The Chinese Basketball Association will take those players. Now, another team that I want to talk about is, of course, Lithuanian. They are signing people just because. Now, um, they already so signed Weems. Um, he played for Toronto last season. I don't know if anybody knows. Um, shout out to Blind Swagger as well. <laughs> um, but he played for Toronto last season. He was a Nuggets guard. Now, what happened was Weems just said, decided, you know, early in the game that I'm going to sign with Lithuania. And basically, it, it worked out in his favor. But Lawson, Ty Lawson, 
guard for the Nuggets as well. He said, "Hey, I'm on. I'm on my way over there as well, man." Um, but see, the thing about the deal that Lawson signed, he signed a NBA opt-out clause, which means if anything happens in the NBA season, you know, and they and they actually get it started, he can leave without even saying a word. Now that's very crazy that. Lithuania and China have two different outlooks on, you know, the whole NBA lockout. Now, Lithuania is saying, hey, we'll welcome anybody as long as we can, you know, get some more revenue, you know, more NBA players that people love across the world in our league. And China is just like, hey, well, I'm sorry, LeBron. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Wade, but we don't need you. <laughs> Obviously, I'm guessing their Chinese league is just doing pretty good for themselves and they and, and instead of taking NBA contracted players, they're just going to say, "Hey, we'll get a couple free agents and that's that." Now, the owners, I, I do have a message for the owners. Please, you know, I know you guys want to make money just like everybody else and I know you have to like I right, take the Mavericks for instance. Um, the owner of the Mavericks, we all know who he is. I no need to say his name, but he like when with him winning this championship, do you know how much money he has to put out next season to actually show that his team can make it to the championship, that his team can win games like merchandise um, and putting out profitable items, putting up billboards, uh, TV commercials. Uh, they and they they are doing so much and putting out so much money that they make it seem like they don't have enough money to pay the players anymore. Now, of course, you know, the players need to get paid. And, of course, the NBA has to merchandise and, and advertise their players and their teams accordingly. But with this entire salary, salary cap, I just think that if they did this, it would make teams more on an even scale. Like, all right, even if they met at $100 million, If you met at $100 million, okay cool but the flex cap is amazing like you can just do whatever you want with the players and and might not have a merchandising plan but still make it to the to the playoffs you know it's, it's all about profit for everybody man um the same thing with the nfl lockout they were they were going through the same thing they said hey yo we not getting our benefits um can we get paid because okay with that just say somebody did um oh also not to not to cut off what I was talking about, but they were even thinking about not signing up for the Olympic Olympics this summer. And you want to know why? Because the NBA wouldn't be able to hold up the benefits if a player got injured in the Olympics. So that's why they're not even participating in that. Now that's crazy as well. Like you, it's just it's just so much going on with benefits packages. Like people people don't understand the big picture about big business. Now, to be in big business, you guys got to have a union, you know. You can't just have a job where they, people get to do whatever they want and then you just got to suffer the consequences. You guys got to have a plan. You guys got to have a background. You just got to know what's going on. But is there, is there anything that I really missed? Um, if, it, if it is, please leave you guys, please leave comments. Like, you know, of course... I wanna I wanna know more about the NBA lockout because um the things that I have I'm I'm mostly late like, I have everything from like July first until yesterday because yesterday that's when the CBA really announced that they said hey we're not taking anybody with a contract but um it's like Derek Fisher said that of course right now they are faced with dealing with the business aspect of the game which means they do want to play basketball but they're gonna work hard. They're going to be focused and dedicated to get the results that they want. So, that got, with that being said, you guys, you know, um, this quarter is coming to a close. Um, basically, I'm going to sit on a bench, you know, watch my team play, you know, try to make it to halftime. And I'm just going to let you guys watch everything as it unfolds. Um, please check out the third quarter in the next few days. Um, I will be having annotations to all of these videos as I update the new video so of course there won't be a link in the description but check back in a few days or I might even put out a bulletin you know saying third quarter will be up soon or something like that 
so just just look out for these for these games you guys because this i really want to be informative but at the same time i want to i want to have a little bit of live calm but i do want to touch on a lot of things that i've been wanting to talk about lately so um if you guys also if you have any topics that you want to hear from me that you want me to talk about just let me know because um i'll talk about it you know i do have a, a wide range and i can just talk about anything but all right you guys peace second attempt here and so it's tied as we head to halftime kobe having just a fantastic game he's got 24 points and free throws have been big for him today with six points from the line what an opening half that was for him Time breakdown powered by HP. I'm Damon Bruce. Glad to have you with us. The Lakers are going all out to stay in it. Right now, they're in second place in the conference standings. Some terrific basketball from Kobe. No surprise, we all know he can score. It's also been a strong start for the Clippers. They've played gritty D and have been hauling in the defensive rebounds. There's been some great work in this one by Blake Griffin. He's got 10 points. He's getting things done on the defensive end, too. A lot of points on the board between these two. They've led the charge in scoring for their teams. And that'll just about wrap things up for us. Now let's get back to your game. Kevin Harlan, Clark Kellogg, Doris Burke, take it away.